everyone. My name is Sammy. I am on the Aries server. And having seen that there was a need, at least within my guild and possibly outside, for a step-by-step -step guide on player versus player, I have decided to create this video, uh, which will help those just starting in player versus player to understand how it works and what you need to do. So first of all, there are a few things that you need to have in player versus player. First, you need to be at least level 30. You cannot make any of the weapons or get any of the equipment until level 30. And that's a game requirement. It is advised, though, that you be higher than that because you will have probably just finished clearing out your island and you will need a good production base in order to do expeditions as well as adventures for the foreseeable future. The second thing that you need is you need to get a combat armory, a combat academy, and at least one marshal, preferably more than one, and if you have gold coins, a supplier as well. Starting with the building, and here you go into this second tab here, you have the combat academy and the combat armory. My combat academy is over here. I've already leveled it to level four, and it allows you to produce the different troops for expeditions. You have your attack units. You have attack infantry, attack archers, and attack cavalry. These are the ones that do the heavy duty work. They are the ones who actually fight. And if you hover over these, you'll see what they can do. Each one has a bonus, so attack. Infantry beats cavalry, archers beat melee, and cavalry beats ranged. Think of it as the Settlers Online rock, paper, scissors, and that's a good analogy. Now you have heavy units. These are your blocking units. They do not have, they don't have much damage at all, but they have a higher amount of hit points, so they will take a beating for longer. Now, because their damage is lower, a lot lower, they are not good for fighting. They are just simply there to get your main attack force past the camp, past the influence zone, to the boss camp, so that you can initiate the fight there. That is really all that you want to use them for. If you've done regular adventures, especially with Vlops, you will know what I mean. These are the equivalent of a one recruit block. From what I have found, you do not want to use these as a round block because any troops that you lose, even during a block, will stay dead. So it's not a good idea to try and do round blocks in player versus player because they do not work like they do in adventures. The third unit that you need is the elite unit. Now this one is actually optional. You don't absolutely need it because this one requires valor points to make. And valor points you get by conquering expeditions. So these are going to be elite units that you keep maybe a few on hand, or you might not. You don't absolutely need them. But they do a little bit more damage than the typical heavy unit, but not by much. So they will still die, and they are just for blocking. So, going on to the weapons. This is my armory. This is pretty self-explanatory infantry archers, cavalry. These are your heavy weapons. These are your attack weapons. And you will notice the requirements for each of these. These are working just like a provision house. You set them up, you queue them, you let it run. You cannot buff it with a chocolate rabbit. You cannot buff it with any buff, except for the buff that's in the shop. You will get one during the original quest line, but after that you have to buy them with gems, 
there may be a possibility of getting them in the future with the Christmas one. So I'll just go through these. You can see that a lot of these use a lot of coal, a lot of iron, hardwood, and steel. And this is why I say that you want to be higher than level 30 in order to do player versus player. Okay. So, now you need a marshal. You need to be able to attack. The marshals are in the tavern. Now, I have bought all the marshals I can, but they're down here below the geologist. You just buy them as you would any of these other specialists. And then you have the supplier. The supplier, they can transport troops to and from your island to the expedition island, but they cannot fight. It's good to have them if you can afford it, because they do not also count against the troop limit. I will get into that in a moment. You can get them over here in the shop at your expeditions. They're right here. They are for gold coins. They're not for gems, so they're pretty easy to get. Now, if you want to get the best one, then you're going to have to defeat a couple of islands to get the valor points to get the best one. See, here's the buffs that I was talking about. These, you can get them if you want. From what I have seen, they are one use only. They do not hold over to all colonies that you conquer. So are they worth it? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Okay. So now that we have all of the buildings, and I do highly recommend upgrading them as far as you possibly can, the higher you upgrade them, faster they'll go, obviously. You'll want to go ahead and queue up your weapons and then your troops. I recommend doing it on a slow pace, depending on how much you have in the background, how much you have stored. If you have a lot of iron and coal that you can get rid of, then go ahead and queue them up all you want. If you need to kind of limit it, then limit it. A good idea is to try and build about 25 troops a day. Now, how much do you need? Well, for a small expedition, you need at least that many troops. In this case, you will see down below the regular troops. Uh, you'll see the different PvP troops. You need at least 150 of each attack type and probably at least 100 of each heavy type. You may not need them all in order to complete the small adventure, but you might. So if you don't have them, then you have to make them, and you have to make them pretty quick, because there is a time limit per expedition, and it is not a long time limit like adventures. So you will notice I have a whirlwind adventure over here. Now, I am holding on this. Now, expeditions act just the same way as adventures do. They do take up your adventure slot. This one was started by a friend of mine, so I can go ahead and open an expedition. How do you do that? So, let's go ahead and go to an explorer. So, if you go into an explorer, you'll see Find Expedition. Click on it, and you have the option for small colony, regular colony, or large colony. In this case, we're going to do a small colony. And you will see that it, they have a recovery time instead of an action time. It's a recovery time. The fast explorers, this one I got during an event, will need an hour and a half to recover. If you have the lucky explorers, and small, then they'll only need an hour, an hour to recover. And then, of course, regular need three hours to recover. Let's go ahead and do a small expedition. That's about all the troops that I have for it. So 50 coins, 50 sausage. Let's go. Okay. Here we wait. And then you get this. That's a different discovered colony. Now these are all owned by players. As you can see, they're all in red. And then we have one that's owned by bandits. And then these are the rewards that you can get from them. This is every six hours. Now, I don't know, there's no experienced or expert resources in here. I think I will just discard them. Okay. This is why I had more than one explorer ready to go. So, let's try it again.
not too much, but a little bit better. So you'll see that there's now titanium in here. That's okay. Uh, we have hardwood, we have coal. Well, not too sure about that. So we'll try one more time. I have one more explorer that I can send out. Quick explorer. To get a good feel for it and how the system works, if you aren't doing the tutorial, I recommend doing that first. You'll want to go get the bandits first, because players will put down new defenses on top of what was already there. So you'll want to go ahead and do that. So we'll just click it, and then we'll do start colony. Do you want to start? Yes. Okay, so just like an adventure, it's going to pop up over here. And you'll notice it started at six hours, and it's counting down. You have six hours to conquer the map. If you do not conquer it in the six hours, then you will lose it. Simple as that. Now, what I use before I do anything... I have a calculator that I made. Now, this is in Google. You can use this. This is my personal copy, but I do have one in the comments that you can go to and get a copy for yourself, and it will give you how many troops you need for each camp or for a map if you put in all of the troops. So let's go back to the game, and let's go visit this island. I do not know at this time if there are any set maps or a certain number of set maps or if they are all randomly generated. I am assuming there is a certain set number of maps, but we don't know. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look for the map boss because you have to defeat him in order to claim the colony. How do you know what is the map boss? It looks like a white castle right here. So you know that you have to get to this guy, which means that you have to go more than likely all the way around here. Now the question is, can we get past here? the marshal might be able to squeeze by that without attacking it or getting intercepted. But it might not. So, this is what I do. Now, if you have the marshals to do it, it is probably best that you do that. So, we'll bring this up and we'll go back home. Okay. So, If you have the marshals to do it, I highly suggest that you take one marshal and you send one or two troops to it just so that you can do fake attacks to figure out exactly which route you have to take and thereby you know what how many troops you need to send. So you just do select units and in this case let's go ahead and do infantry. You'll notice it takes two minutes 
minutes to get there, but it takes 30 minutes for him to come back. So always be sure, unless you have the marshals to do it, to send the troops that you need ahead of time, because coming back for more troops is going to be very time consuming. And we will go ahead and jump ahead to that time. Okay, so my marshal has arrived with the two troops. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I want to do a fake attack. And I want to see if I were to go and try and attack the map boss right now, what route do I have to take? And look at that. One camp. I have one camp that would be intercepting me. That is lucky. Most of the time, you have to go through at least six camps. So I got a good map at this point. But let's assume that we don't want to do that. take this camp out. I'll do it as a demonstration here. So the camp has 80 cavalry. So we need 80 infantry to be able to take out that camp. But do we need 80 infantry? Let's go check. So bandit riders, there are 80 bandit riders. How many do we need? We need 60 attack infantry to take out that camp. Okay, no problem. But while we're here, let's go ahead and assume that we're going to leave this marshal here for the fake attack again. Okay, so this camp right here is the one that is blocking. So let's in there? Another 80 cavalry. Go back over here, and we'll put in 160. Now, we don't really want to block or take out that camp. We want to block it. So we want 80 there, and we want to block there. Now, my little sheet, as I put here, is all blocking is assumed to be one-to-one. -one. In a lot of cases, it really depends on your placement as to exactly how many blocking troops that you need. In many cases, just to get the marshal by, you only need 10 because it will take a little while. So let's look at the map again. You see here, it's only a tiny little corner that he'd be walking through. tiny little corner right there. So 10 should be good if we put them not too close together, but fairly close together. If in doubt, you can always send more, but let's assume 10. So I'll go ahead and I'll change this to 10, just so that I have my numbers. Now, what is on the map boss? Another thing is you'll notice this little red arrow. This denotes that this enemy will attack first. So we need to make sure that we have our troops when we send them to counteract this one first. I will get to that in a moment when we get to attacking. So for cavalry, we need infantry. For infantry, we need archers. And this guy? Well, you'll notice that he has a bonus against melee, and it says in the upper right that he's ranged. Oops, sorry. So, he is an archer type. To defeat archers, we need cavalry. But, let's go ahead and put it in. So, there are 60 bandit cavalry, 60 thugs, and one eyed earth boss. So, we'll go back over to the sheet here. Bandit Calvary. 
about 80 plus 60 is 140. And we have 60 subs. And we'll put one in there. Okay. Now, this says that we need 80 infantry, 40 archers, 20 cavalry, and 10 heavy infantry units in order to be able to completely take out the map. Okay. This is assuming about how many losses that we will incur. Okay. Let's go add the troops. So, first of all, we will go back to the home. Now, you need at least two marshals. Because in this case, we are going to do at least one block. So we need at least two marshals. I already have one marshal there, so I need to send at least one more, and then my supplier, in order to get all the troops there. Give me just a moment. Okay, there we go. So I'm back home. I put the bar back down. Make it cleaner. So now we need another marshal. Now, how many troops did we need? We needed 80 infantry, 20 cavalry. Why did I skip it? I'll show you in just a moment. We only have a troop limit of 100 per marshal. So to get the 100, I'm going to add the 80 infantry, but remember, I already sent two, and the 20 cavalry. So that's attack infantry. I know this looks like it should be, but it's not. It's heavy. This is attack infantry, and this is attack cavalry. Apply. Now you can actually add the troops. This is nice. You can type in the number instead of using the slider. I'm going to go ahead and send 80 anyways, even though there's two there. A couple extra isn't going to hurt. And just quickly. Now, I do warn against doing the X and then adding more troops because I have found that they don't actually go back into your inventory for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's something I did. To be safe, delete this down to zero and then exit out. And then you can add different units if you want. And then you have the expedition supplier. Let's put the rest of our troops in that. So we have the infantry, we have the cavalry. Let's add archer and heavy infantry. So 40 archer, 10 heavy infantry. This is the attack archer and heavy infantry. Okay, so we need 40 attack archers and 10 heavy infantry. Let's check. Yes. Okay. The guardsmen here, ignore it because this will always display the total of what's in here. Because you can use these to substitute for any or all three of these. I wouldn't worry about it too much. That's why it's in yellow. Okay. So, 40, 10. Done. Okay. So now, we will go ahead and send our new marshal and our expedition supplier. And it'll take two minutes. I'll see you in two minutes. Okay, I'm back. Marshall and my expedition supplier have arrived. So let's go ahead and unload the supplier. Just like an adventure, you can unload the troops that will stay on the expedition island. Okay, and let's go ahead and unload this Marshall too. Okay, so let's take out this camp first. Just to be safe, just to make sure that the block goes through correctly. 80 cavalry. Let's check over here. Now you can go ahead and delete these. Because now you can run it as one camp at a time. And delete the block too. And we'll put in the cavalry. And then what do we need to send? 60 infantry. This is going to be a, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to be a really easy battle. So we'll change this to 60. Okay. And, okay. Now, let's go ahead and send to the camp. Now you see this is red, and it shows the enemy and what you have. Go ahead and click on the camp again. It'll say 
can choose your first unit. In the case of you sending more than one, you'll have to choose which one goes first. But you still have to choose one. So we'll just click the infantry. Now let's zoom in because the battle animation is really cool. Now compared to a general for adventures, these marshals run. They will go to the camp extremely fast. So it makes doing blocks a little bit trickier, but not much. I still zigzag. Okay. So let's zoom in a little bit more. And here is the new battle. So you'll notice the plus here means that this guy has the advantage. We are always blue, the enemy is always red. Now see here, stack of 20. We always add a stack of 20. For heavy units, it's only a stack of 10. That's why I said only 10. But you'll see there's 31 in reserve here. So it goes back up to 20, and we continue fighting. Okay, let's go over here. It, this is why I say it always does max damage. You almost always you lose 11 units, or you're down to 11 units, always. whatsoever, which can be a good thing. You know exactly how many troops you're going to lose. Okay, so he was victorious. Let's zoom back out and go back here. We have 24 left. Good. Now, we need to set up, let's zoom back out, to set up this route. So we're going to have to block this camp. do attacks, but you want to just kind of get a feel for where you need to place your marshals to do good blocks. I'm going to place him here. So when I put him here, do I know that he's going to be able to go to just this camp without getting intercepted by this camp? No, I don't. What we may have to do, or what I may have to do in this case, is actually send this marshal here and let him get intercepted by this camp, which means it's going to take longer before I can send this one. But let's check. I'm not going to actually send the attack, but I want to see. Nope. See, he'll be intercepted by this camp. Can I get there? Yes. So he'll be intercepted by that camp. Now, for those of you who are number people, uh, if you want to count flags, which is a standard in some adventures if you don't have a good guide, the marshal will move one flag per second, approximately, from what I have seen. I would say that really you'll just have to decide what you want to do. Now, before I go any further, see up here that the numbers have changed. This is how many units you have lost. This is your troop limit. You cannot have more than 520 troops on this island. This is a small island. Each island has a different troop limit. Medium or rec normal has larger and then larger even larger than that. So, small, you can only take 520. If some of them die, well, too bad. They still count. So you want to make sure when you come in, you find out where the map boss is and take the shortest route there and do what you can so that you can complete it in the troop limit. And you may have to do a block. There may be no way around it. In this case, if I didn't want to do a block, I wouldn't have to. I could have sent enough troops to take out this camp and take out this camp. But I'll do a block so that you can see the block. Now, 10, go to here. I am going to a 
assumes that he's going to get intercepted pretty quickly. So I'm just going to leave him like this. Let's go ahead and put these guys into my calculator. So 60 riders, 60 thugs, and one bird. 60 riders, 60 thugs, and one bird. So 40 infantry, 40 archer, 20 cavalry. your first one. Now you'll notice this guy is behind this guy. Should give enough time for this guy to be intercepted and block this camp, and then this guy to get through this portion right here of the intercept zone toward the map boss. We will know very shortly. If you do not feel comfortable blocking, then go ahead and send enough troops to take out the camp. You'll notice, if we zoom in here, that this takes a little while because they do have such higher HP. Until you see this guy here change. You're going to just leave it alone. But always keep a watch on the battle because you will need to change it, especially for the multiple mixed camps. Okay, you see this guy change to infantry? So we need to change this guy to archery. Click here, click your archer. Now the archer is in back. Okay, so now they switch. The archer is now here. So now we wait until this guy changes again, and that will be the bird, or the one-eyed boss. Yeah, I just love the animation. The armor goes flying. So we need, he's an archer. 
Archer. So we're going to need Calvary to take him out. So you just click here, select the different troop, click once, and they become reserved. And they'll go in when the next battle starts, the next round of the battle starts. And the little angel goes up and he gets off. There we go. So now he is gone. And you'll notice that these sectors did not get claimed out. That's because they are run by these leaders. You do not have to take them all out. Unless the quest says, all you need is to defeat the map boss. We did that. Now, I always like to load up my troops before I complete the expedition or the adventure. So I'm just going to wait for my marshals to come back. This guy is recovering. Yes, it still takes four hours for him to recover. I'll wait for this guy to come back, and I'll see you as soon as he comes back. All right, everyone, I'm back. So my marshal is back. So I like to load up all of the troops. Oops, put him up here. You'll see out of all of the troops that I had sent, which was 82 of the attack infantry, 20 attack cavalry, and 80 attack archers. I didn't too too bad in losses. I did actually pretty good. I got a good map this time around. So I'll just load them up. Well, I also lost the 10 heavy cavalry too. 10 heavy infantry. Okay. And we can make sure we can make sure that there's no more Just like an adventure, it's going to come up and say return. It says attacks initiated three, marshals injured one. How many troops we lost? 111, which is pretty good. How long did it take us? 38 minutes. Pretty good. Now, mind you, this was a very easy map. Most maps are not going to be this easy. And unless you send all of the troops at once, it may take you hours. My first expedition took me almost the full six hours. It was a little over five hours in order for me to conquer it. So I'll go ahead and return home. We are now home. Okay. You'll notice it's still over here. That's part of it. But open up your mail. This also is its own known bug for the undefined text. They are working on it. I, we have so many bug reports for that. And... These are the rewards that I got. 94 exotic wood. Yeah, it's okay. It's not that bad. Not for the losses I incurred. Of course, I am running premium. So I did get half again as much. And then you can also choose the middle. Let's go ahead and see. Now, one thing I did want to say with this is that once you have made it your colony, can be attacked. I'll get to that in a minute. If you do win a battle against another attacker, then you will get a loot. This one, actually, I have submitted the bug report on this because I actually had somebody attack and conquer my first colony. And I viewed the report and this seems really high. But I have submitted a bug report on that, but you'll get a bug report with what they attacked with, as well as a mail. I'm not sure if you're supposed to get a full loot mail like this, including the valor points, but I sent it as a bug report anyways, because I don't think you're supposed to get this full loot. I think you're only supposed to get the resources. So, what about the resources? go over here, you'll see colonies. You can either click on that, or you can click on this little world icon. 
for whatever reason, it is not letting me actually build specimens. You will be guaranteed 12 hours before another player can take the expedition from you, an assignment from you. After 12 hours, it is free game. So just remember that. Now, Valor Points. What are Valor Points? Valor Points you get when you actually take a island or successfully defend your island from another player. Now, since players can add defenses to most islands, this is going to get very expensive. And what can you get with them? Well, in the shop, under expeditions, you can buy the expedition quartermaster. That's always good to have at least one. I think all you can get is one, yes. And then you can also buy these. These are one-time use. You add them to the one colony, and it doesn't use up any of your current defense points, but you can still add it, and it goes on. So that's the very basic bare bones of player versus player. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I am always open for people answering, asking me questions. I'm always here when I'm not at work, of course. So don't be afraid to just come out of nowhere and say, you know, hey, I have a question, particularly for my guildmates in the Aries Platinum Python Guild. I am always here to answer questions. So, okay, so you're probably wondering what happened. Okay, it disappeared. It's been changed. It's actually the next day is bathroom maintenance. I still notice that my little colony is still over here. But it now has a neighboring expedition here and built defenses to claim colony. So it's kind of cool. Take note. So you'll notice the bandits are back. But you have little building blocks here that you can add new defenses to. Highly recommend you do that, especially right here, because we went this way, as well as right here, because then we can't just, anybody attacking can't just put the simple blocks in. So what do we do? We have 280 defense points, and how do we spend those? those in our builders. We have small camps, and we also have fortified camps, and strongholds. And you'll notice that the strongholds are much more expensive than any of the other camps, which makes sense. Now remember, you'll also pay for each of the troops. So depending on how much of a fight you really want to give them, you really want to decide. I'm going to try and give them as much fight as I can. I'm going to take this and put it right here. So I'm only going to build one. Okay, I went down to 130. So now let's go ahead and add this. Each unit costs one they have the bonus. This is a heavy, which will make it last longer. That's good on their side for a block, not so much on our side. So let's go ahead and add. I'm going to add 20 of each.
good magic team up with all of the influence zones too. But you can only build on these selected sites. You can't just play from anywhere in the channel. So we'll go ahead and add the rest of our camp. The rest of our setup and we will we have a limit of six people put in this game. That should give us a little bit more I've set my defenses. My defenses are at zero, so I can't add anything more. I'm going to go ahead and go back home. Now, I'll just click on that and then do home clock. Now, it does say you are invulnerable to attack for 12 hours. So it is a definite that you will keep your colony for at least 12 hours. Do OK. And you cannot go back to the colony after this. So it shows up in here. This is how long you have to keep your colony. You have seven days. So the maximum time that you can keep your colony is seven days. Every six hours it's going to produce this amount here and it will show up over here where you have to come in and click gather resources to gather them. And do, do that at least once a day or twice a day. If you do get attacked, you do lose it, you should get a mail with the resources that were produced up to that point. As I said, bug, I got one where I got the full loot instead of the resources that were supposed to be done and I got a response back from that saying that they are working on it, it is an issue. So that's all there is to it. And so if you have any questions, 